Hello, welcome to a great Thursday. I hope it's one that's really good for you as we get closer and closer to the very special day. Wow. I hope you've been good this year and get more than coal in your stocking. Anyway, it's a great Thursday. Glad you're with me today. So come on into my little world for just a moment as we share a thought or two together here. You know, as the year begins to wind down and we begin to think about endings and beginnings. We start thinking about where we are and what we know, what we've learned, what we've done. And all I was thinking about those moments of awakening. I think they call them Eureka moments. And maybe we have more than one in our lives, but there are, there are those times that it seems like we just kind of awaken. It's uh, the, the startling revelation that comes our way. Maybe it's something that's been buried in our brain for a while, but for some reason, circumstance or whatever it might be, it comes out. I think about the story that Jesus told in Luke 15 of the lost son. We often call it the prodigal son. Gotten away from home, wasted away what money he had. It was uh, gone and kind of hired himself out, but nobody's looking after him. He's feeding pigs, a thing that he would... Uh, th thought the last thing in the world that he would ever do, but there he is feeding a bunch of pigs, but nobody's taking care of him anymore. It wasn't like it had been in his past. When he had money and people wanted to be around him. When he was home and there were people around him. And that's when that eureka moment struck him. I believe it's verse 17 of Luke 15 when it said, is then, then, that he realized when he came to himself, most of the translations say. He awakened, suddenly he had a eureka moment. What in the world am I doing here? Because at home, nobody goes without food. There's always plenty, there's always enough. And you know, it's a pretty good life. Well, it was buried in his brain for a while when he was kind of busy doing his own thing and kind of fulfilling his, his uh, uh, desires or whatever they might have been. Well, it doesn't take necessarily something that far away, something that decadent, if you will, for us to have those eureka moments. Sometimes they come in the midst of perplexing situations. You know, in 1922, Einstein, Albert Einstein was working in the patent office, bored to death, hated his job, but he went there every day, did his job, and one day he was sitting there just daydreaming, and the thought struck him that if a man, a human body, was falling through the air, in essence it felt weightless. It's kind of one of those things you say, well, Duh, yes, but it led him to begin to open up, I should say, not begin, but open up his mind in his studies of physics, ultimately leading to some of the revelations that he brought into the scientific world and the physics that were involved in that. But you know, he wasn't the first to have just kind of one of, the, one of those awakening moments that started a, a consideration. You can go back hundreds, now thousands of years prior, and we've got Archimedes, who legend says he was taking a bath. And then he began to realize something about the physics of displacement, of weight and volume and, di and displacement of water. And that the upward pressure of the water was equal to the amount of water that was displaced by the body or whatever it was that was placed within the water. And so certain things are going to float and certain things are going to sink depending on density, weight, all those kind of things. And you who are scientific about those things probably could explain it much better. But that's the general idea of it. And you say, well, everybody's been taking baths for a long time and knew that some things float and some things didn't, and we figured that out. We didn't have to have the scientific method to figure that out, but yet there is that awakening. Where does that take us? To consider as ships float in the water today. Why? Because we understand that principle. We understand what's going on. We've studied the scientific methods along the way, but every now and then something just awakens whether it's Einstein or Archimedes or somebody else along the way. 
you and I may have small ones in our lives, or maybe we'll have a great one somewhere along the way. I doubt it for me, but maybe for you, one of those that will change the world. We have an awakening. This is, wow, where did this come from? There are those who study this kind of thing, who, who think that uh, it's not just a moment, but it is something that arises out of long-term study. There was a, a lady who studied uh, Carol Dweck in, her fan, in a book entitled Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. And here's what she wrote in that. She said, the whole self-esteem movement taught us erroneously that praising intelligence, talent, abilities would foster confidence, self-esteem, and everything great would follow. But we found it, to, it backfires. People who are praised for talent now worry about losing the thing, and it goes on. So what should we praise? The effort, the strategies, the doggedness, and the persistence, the grit of people, the resilience that they show in the face of obstacles, that bouncing back when things go wrong and knowing what to try next. So I think a huge part of promoting a growth mindset in the workplace is to convey that those values and a process give feedback to reward people engaging in the process, but not just at a successful outcome. In other words, in my mind, if I get what's being said is, Eureka moments are just the result of hard work, determination. Maybe they arrive because we relax our minds for a moment. Maybe they come in the middle of the night, we lay there and say, aha, that's what I was thinking. So call it an aha moment, call it, call it a eureka moment, call it just the end result. It is maybe the determination and the unwillingness to let go that, sudden, that suddenly dawns on you when all things flow together and we say, there it is, there it is. There are spiritual aha moments, I believe. The people who have known of God, maybe even read the Bible, and along the way, something just clicks. I think about somebody like Saul of Tarsus. Now his was quite a confrontation, but in the process he realized, hey, why in the world don't, did, haven't I accepted this, that this Jesus is the Christ all along? When we have those realizations, it's usually the process of things that have happened in our lives and that unwillingness to let go of our pursuit of understanding and knowledge. Don't ever let go. Let's be in that process of ever learning. And I've got to believe that if we keep growing, keep understanding, we will have those moments, whether spiritual or secular, but I love the spiritual ones when we say, oh, I get it now. I understand. Those are the great moments of life and they are the result of your unwillingness to let go, but to keep determined and growing. I think about Einstein, Archimedes, a few others along the way, maybe even Abraham when he was holding up that knife and said, okay, now I understand. It's a good thing, those aha moments, those eureka moments. And if you have one today, Enjoy it. You have one tomorrow. Keep on enjoying it. They'll come. Just don't ever let go. Hey, I'm glad you're with me today. And I hope this season, this end of the year, this time helps bring some great Eureka moments to your life as well. Hey, we'll share some more a little further down the road.